Coding is basically translating English language into Bahrainese. It's another edition of Bistec on Ghana Web TV. I am now Oyo Kwote. Stay tuned as I bring you business news that made headlines during the week and an exclusive interview you wouldn't want to miss. Now, in the growing world of information technology, coding has become very important. Like learning a new language, it is best to learn coding at a younger age to build a solid foundation. Now, in Ghana, there are several institutions who have taken it upon themselves to teach young people about the art of coding, as well as the benefits of coding to society. One of such are Richard Esumening and Forgive Adifu of Naraso Ghana Limited. My colleague Mauli Aholomega sat with these two who delved into the prospect of coding in Ghana. Enjoy the conversation. In a few years, machine learning infused with coding will begin to dominate key sectors of our economy. In Ghana, a group of young professionals are helping young people to learn about different aspects of coding to help bring change in our society. On this week's edition of BizTech, I speak with one of the coordinators for Code Factory to learn more about the development. Before I introduce my guest, I'll take a quick break and we'll be right back. Welcome up from that break on this week's edition of This Tech. My guest is Nana Kwame Asimeni and he is the application manager for cybersecurity at Naraso Ghana and he's also the coordinator for Code Factory. Nana, welcome to This Tech. Thank you, bro. Yeah, how are you doing? I'm good yourself. I'm doing very well. Great, it's good to meet you, man. Yeah. So before before we go into it, um, I've been learning a lot from you in coding in, in for the coding aspect of things. For those who don't really know what coding is, what exactly is coding? Oh, okay. Thank you. So coding is basically translating English language into Bahrainese. Okay. So, okay, so when we talk about languages, we have different type of languages. Mm -hmm. Computers, they don't speak English. Mm -hmm. They speak coding. So coding is a computer language. Okay. That's the only language computer understands. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about coding, it's just like you are translating English language. Mm -hmm. Into numbers, yeah. zero and one. <laughs> zero and one. Yes. So basically, that's what most computers understand. Yes. Okay. So, what are the types of coding and the aspects of coding? Okay. So we have various types of coding. Mm. Okay. But as for for us as uh, Naraso and uh, Code Factory, we, we focus on you know, four key programming languages. Mm. So we are looking at Scratch. You know, because what we seek to achieve or to do is to train the children mm. from age between 5 to 17 on how to code. Mm. So we start with Scratch, which is the basic programming languages that they can do their own gaming and all that. Then we look at the HTML and CSS, you know, to build their own application, website, small websites, things like that. We look at Python, you know, Python, you can do gaming. As a matter of fact, Python, you can do a lot of things from Python. You can do gaming in advance. You can do uh, data analytics and all that website all through Python. So it's one of the languages we teach. And we also teach AI, okay. artificial, and, um, intelligence. artificial intelligence and robotics. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but there are, there, are, there are a lot of languages as far as coding is concerned, like Java, Flutter, and all that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah. So you mentioned something very interesting, like artificial intelligence. Yes. Yeah, which is a very key component yes. of our world. 
Um, for those who don't really know what artificial intelligence, just give us a brief. And where do you see artificial intelligence, the role it will play in our in our global development? Right. Okay. So, artificial intelligence have come to stay. Mm. You know, it's building an image with certain level of intelligence mm. to be able to do certain basic functions. As a matter of fact, by five to ten years, mm -hmm. a lot of people will lose their job if they don't know how to code. That's very worrying. Yeah, because you see, the artificial intelligence is come to do certain aspects for mm -hmm. businesses, processes and all that. Okay. So that is why we as Naraso mm -hmm. and Co Factory are so passionate to train the children. You know, Bible say train the child the way they should go so that when they grow. So we want to start inculcate this into them. You know, so that by the by the time they are out of uh, senior high, they are more or less entrepreneurs. They can start doing their own thing. Yeah. So artificial intelligence is a very sensitive uh, subject uh, and as where they they use it at the airport and all that. They have robotics with intelligence, you know, and they do all that. So in the global landscape, mm. it's growing. Mm. And we need to catch up as, as Ghanaians, as Africans. And that's why we are so passionate to start training the kids. Mm. Yeah, because very soon when you go to the airport, you see artificial intelligence <laughs> at, at the higher display because yeah. the robots have level of intelligence and therefore they can take your picture they can scan your passport and that reduce the the human being you know yeah yeah so 10 years to come artificial intelligence robotics will do of course yeah they will do a lot of things yeah. i mean they we can't take the human out mm. but most of the job will be processing and that will be done by AI and robotics. Okay. Now I want to come to the Ghanaian context, especially primarily our robotics space. Yeah. I know it's a sector that is it's it's picking up. It's yeah. not there yet. But what does coding the role of coding come to play in our robotics space? Amazing. Mm. Amazing. Because see, the robots are computers mm. and they don't speak any language apart from coding. Mm. So coding is the driver. Mm. Okay. It is said that whatever you want to discover, okay, under this universe in the 21st century, being pursued of career, basic computer programming is very essential by, by Stephen Hawking, mm -hmm. you know. So coding is the basic, is the fundamentals. Mm -hmm. Now everything has changed. We have mobile money applications. We, ha we have a lot of applications. All these applications, the bottom line is coding. Mm. Okay, so coding is the driver, it's the universal language. Mm. And very soon, if you don't know how to speak the language, you, you, you'll be left out. Right. <laughs> so coding is just like another language. And the reason why we are focused on the children is that statistics have shown that children are fast learners. Mm. I mean, when they are young, they're able to learn mm. and keep it. So. That's why we, as a company, we are focusing in training the kids okay. so that they'll, they'll get there. We'll, we'll, we'll come to the, the kids' aspect right. very shortly, but right. I'm having a very interesting conversation. Right. Let me just take a quick break. Right. Break. right. Thank you. I'm just speaking with Nana Kwame Asimini, and he's the cybersecurity application manager for Norasol Ghana, and he's also the coordinator for Code Factory, and they've been teaching young kids how to learn coding. I'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back from that break on Vistech. I've been speaking with Richard Kwame Asumeni, and he's a coordinator for Code Factory, and he's also the software application manager for Noras of Ghana. And I promise, I've been learning so much from you, especially coding and artificial intelligence and all of that. Now let's come to Code Factory. Okay. And I want to find out what's the impact of teaching these young kids so far. I know you've been operating for some time now. Right. right. What has the impact been so far for you? Okay, thank you. It's, it's been awesome. It's been great. But but before I talk about the impact, 
Um, I'm in charge of cyber security and application. Okay. You're right. Okay. So, okay. yeah, I'm in charge. So it's, it's been amazing, you know, seeing these kids learning how to code and they are able to, because we know kids are consumers of technology. Mm -hmm. Okay, so for us to train them to be more proactive, to more to build that confidence in them to develop their own gaming. So instead of them being consumers, now they are more like innovators. Mm -hmm. So it's been awesome because we are, when we, we, we just finished our first um, in-house, no, like school level uh, okay. training, which is being shown on Metro TV from Mondays to Wednesdays, 4 to 4.30. And you see kids by age five, seven to 17, developing their own basic games and uh, doing their own games, building their small, small website. So it's been, it's been awesome. The impact is great. Okay. It's been awesome. But yeah, just still on the kids, what's that one key thing that you find among the kids? The enthused learning, the coding, are you see, uh, it, like, is it impacting on their education and all of that? Yes, mm. yes, it is. I mean, they, you see, they love gadgets. Mm. So for you to tell them that, okay, you play games on the computer, you don't know who developed the game. But when you go through these lessons, mm. you have the ability and the knowledge, the skill set, the confidence to do your own game mm. and play. That's, that is awesome. And that's what is driving them. Because they want to do, you know, build their own game, develop their own games, play with their, their siblings and show their parents. And that's the proud of every parent. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Elon Musk, by the age of 10, he started coding. At age 12, he has developed his own game, mm -hmm. sold it to Computer Magazine. Mm -hmm. Today, he's, he's one of the richest. Yeah. yeah. So it's been awesome. Been they, they love it. Because they love playing with gadgets, they love playing with computers, and this time they are not consuming, mm -hmm. but they are making an impact and creating their own, their own games. So it's been great. It's been great. Yeah, so I want to come down to your field, which is cyber security. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cyber security is very essential for any technology, and I know what's the correlation between coding and cyber security? Are they related in a way? Of course, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so cyber security is awesome. I mean, there's nothing like being a security man, <laughs> you know, just to, just to see what is happening in the cyberspace, uh, just to see, monitor, you know, prevent the bad guys and all that. So it's been awesome. So coding, it's helping because um, you can write a basic security script, mm -hmm. you know, using Python, you know, for monitoring and analyzing packets mm -hmm. and all that. So it's been awesome. And cyber security is great. I love it. So cyber security is the future and coding is also the Of course, future. of course, because you see, after you built the system, mm. okay, you need a security man to say, hey, let me check. The Are you process. following the, yeah. the best processes? Is everything okay? Are there any vulnerabilities mm. in the coding? If not, then you can go live. So that after you are done with the coding and you are going live, you know that your application is secure. Mm. Okay, yeah. so it's very important right. that they move together. Okay. Richard, so finally, um, you've been operating for some time now. Yeah. What are the prospects for Noraso and then Code Factory? Awesome. Mm. Awesome. Awesome. So um, we, are, we are in another phase mm. where we are recruiting students, you know, for the next uh, level of uh, training mm. on Code Factory. And it's going to be awesome. And as Naraso as company, like I said, we develop softwares, and we've done. We have a lot of softwares we've developed. Mm -hmm. If you have any requirements, you just bring it. Be mobile app and all that. We, we'll do it for you. Okay. So the the future is great. Right. You now we want to grow a new set of children who will come, you know, with hands on, and be able to do something mm -hmm. instead of we don't have unemployment situation where you are out of school, you don't know what to do. Yeah. Yeah. Parents should encourage their children to get into the tech space, especially the coding. Um, we have Code Factory running on Metro TV mm -hmm. from Mondays to Wednesdays, 4.30, you know, 4 to 4.30. And we want them to sign up 
you know, to learn this coding because technology has come to stay mm -hmm. and everything is moving into the digital space. So it's important we, we, we pull the children along and get them there. So, yeah. yeah. Richard, thank you so much. I mean, I've had a very insightful conversation. Thank you. There you have it. I'm speaking with Richard Kwame Asumeni, and he's a cyber security application manager for Norasol Ghana, and he's also a coordinator for Code Factory, and we're learning about coding and its context for Ghana. I have here with me one of the instructors for Code Factory. Her name is Forgive, and she's going to teach us. Little bit about coding. Forgive. Welcome to Best Tech. How are you? Thank you. I'm good. How yes. are you too? I'm doing very well. Okay. So I understand you're one of the instructors at Code Factory. Yes. How's the experience like for you? Okay. So my name is Forgive Venunye Aku Adifu, and um, I'm a software engineer. Okay. And a coding instructor with Code Factory. And um, at Code Factory, we teach kids how to code mm. and build amazing stuff. Mm. Okay, so the program is um, it's helping kids, or it's it's meant to help kids um, explore their potentials mm. in multidisciplinary, diverse. I mean, diverse, fun, live programs, mm. right? And um, I mean, it's it's an interesting program. Currently, we have three sessions. Okay. We have the one-on-one, -on -one, we have the on-premise, and then we have an online session that is going on. Okay. And we have a summer school, summer school well. currently going okay. on, yes. Okay. So um, that's that's a little bit about okay. code factory. Okay. So you've been doing this for some time now. What's yes. the one key thing that you've seen among the, the, the kids that are coming into code factory to learn about the coding? Well, it's helping them mm -hmm. in so many ways. But one of the ways um, that I can talk about is it helps them think differently. It's a you know how? Thing. Yes, okay. yes. How they think about ideas, the vague ideas. Mm -hmm. They are able to, you know, think through it and bring it to like and give solutions to all these ideas mm. and all of that yes okay. so it helps them with problem solving critical thinking and all of that okay finally oh. forgive um, why should anyone come to code factory yeah looking at um, where the world is headed mm. right it's a very good thing for everybody to learn or to know since it's a technological world that mm. we are in now um, it's just good for you to know what is happening, mm. the tools we use in tech, why things are done this way. See, like are, yeah. medical doctors, um, teachers, whoever you are, mm. you need some sort of knowledge, knowledge mm. in coding yeah. to be able to work in your field, mm. right? So this is why everybody should, All I right. mean, give it a chance. Very well said, Forgive. Thank you so much. Thank you too. There you have it. I've been speaking with Forgive and she's one of the instructors at Code Factory and she's been taking us through her experience and then also the experience of some kids who are participating at Code Factory. They've been my guest on this week's edition of This Tech. My name is Maori Ahulimeka. Many thanks for watching. Thank you, Maori Aholimega, for that interesting conversation. Up next is Biz Headlines. Now on to our very first story. The Minister of Trade and Industry, Alan Tremantin, has said the development of the National AFCFTA Policy Framework and Action Plan will improve Ghana's trade regime with other African counterparts. According to him, the Policy Framework and Action Plan under the AFCFTA will outline short to medium term implementation priorities and strategies meant for Ghana's private sector. Speaking at the launch of the National AFCFTA Policy Framework and Action Plan, the Trade and Industry Minister said Ghana stands at a greater chance of harnessing the full benefits of the Free Trade Pact. Ongoing initiatives 
under Ghana's 10 point industrial transformation agenda, such as the one district farm factory initiative, the establishment of new strategic agro industries aimed at diversifying the economy beyond cocoa and gold. The implementation of the National Export Development Strategy, the promotion of small and medium scale enterprises, and the establishment of industrial parks and special economic zones across the country are all initiatives designed to transform our economy and enable Ghana to optimize its benefits from the FCFT. Still on AFCFTA. President Nana Adudankwa Ekufuado has said the institution of the National AFCFTA Policy Framework and Action Plan is an avenue for the private sector to leverage for increased productivity. According to the president, the private sector in Ghana must take full advantage of the free trade agreement, especially at a time when this action plan has been launched to increase the production of Ghanaian-made products. He made the statement in a speech read on his behalf at the launch of the National AFCFTA Policy Framework and Action Plan on Tuesday, August 2, 2022. The National Communication Authority has said proceeds from the five Ghana City charge placed on the cell service for SIM registration via a mobile application will go to the app developer. This comes after stakeholders questioned and criticized government's motive in implementing a surcharge on the self service for the same registration exercise, which has already been cumbersome for many. Speaking in an interview, the Deputy Corporate Affairs Director at the NA NCA, I beg your pardon, Kwame Jan, said the money goes to the app developers, those who built and are maintaining the mobile application without providing any specifics on the app developers. Kwame Jan assured that proceeds were not going to the NACA, NCA as suggested by some. It doesn't go to the NCA, the Deputy Corporate Affairs Director refuted. The Fair Wages and Salaries Commission has announced that the COLA payments to public sector employees will start soon. According to the Commission, the modalities for facilitating the payment have been successfully completed. Chief Executive of the Fair Wages and Salaries Commission, Benjamin Arthur, said, We are certain that the government will implement it, so nobody should have doubts. Realizing the money in your pocket, we are working on the schedule. And I am sure maybe in about two to three weeks' time, the government will come out public with the exact date. That has been done and it will have to be communicated to organized labor. A five-year ban on the construction of liquefied petroleum gas station has been lifted by cabinet at its 35th sitting held on Wednesday, August 3, 2022. The move comes on the back of a strike that was held by tanker drivers and LPG marketing companies over some concerns. In a letter dated August 3, 2022, and addressed to the chairman of the LPG Marketers Association of Ghana, Chief Executive Officer of the National Petroleum Authority, Dr. Mustafa Abdul Hamid. We are pleased to inform you that Cabinet at its 35th sitting held on August 3 has granted a special dispensation to allow the completion of the construction of stranded LPG stations across the country that were affected by the ban on the construction and operation of new LPG facilities in 2017. That's all for this week's edition of Bistec on Ghana Web TV. But log on to www.ghanaweb.com for more news stories. Also get interactive with us on all our social media handles. On Facebook, Instagram and Twitter, we are at the Ghana Web. Also subscribe to our YouTube page, Ghana Web TV. Have a lovely weekend. My name is Na Oyokote.